I'm Derek Chambers. This is Music Industry 101. And tonight, we're going to talk about how to get a record deal. This is episode number four. Major labels are no longer just signing artists. They're signing movements and brands with a proven fan base. So if your goal is to be signed to a major label, any major label a and all would tell you, as an artist or a producer, you need to create a strong digital buzz first by getting your music featured on the same top music blogs the major artists are featured on. Major labels want to see traction. What is traction? Traction is trackable data about you or your brand. This data could be in the form of a BDS broadcast data systems or media-based radio spins, a huge buzz on a mixtape, dollars of online downloads, independent sales, or write-ups and praise from notable publications, presence on key websites and blogs, significant views on YouTube with a music video or blogs, touring, endorsement or co-signs from established artists, etc. So, most major labels, major and independent, won't take a chance on an artist, especially a rapper, without any traction. Now, um, a good way to develop traction is, to, like I said, getting your music featured on the top music blogs, the major artists are featured on. So, when labels pull you up, they see you have a movement, you have a fan base going on, you know? Because they want to return on their investment. They're not going to put money behind an artist because they're not going to make money off. It's not going to be selling. So, they want to be able to pull you up to see if you have traction. So this is a good way for you to develop traction by getting your music featured on major blogs. So we have a package going on right now, which is the second quarter promo package. Okay, total cost is $500, covers one month. Services include major blog or website promotion. So you get featured on the, the home page, on That's Enough, owned by the the legendary DJ, DJ Enough from Hot 97. You get featured on the, the homepage of mechanicaldummy.com, owned by Chris Brand. You get featured on the homepage of isbiscuit.com. You get featured on the homepage of ratfest.com. You get featured on the homepage of urbanbuzzfactor.com. You get featured on the homepage of mymusicmylife.com. You get featured on the homepage of the AR Power Summit.com. Also, you receive e blasts. So, your music will be e blast to 500,000 subscribers via Urban Threshold. Also, One Sheet. One Sheet is, that's also has to do with branding. So, it, it talks about who you are as an artist, it goes into your videos radio interviews, as your picture, everything that you did. So one sheet, we'll create that for you. Press releases. So if you wanna, you know, release your song, okay? We can take care of that for us, you know, releasing your press release on mi2n.com. Yes, we have a press release. Take care of the viral marketing online street team on Twitter and Facebook. Consultation slash business plan. Consultation from Urban Threshold throughout the campaign. You receive a free copy of the critic reacclaim book, the independent music grind and PDF fan format. So this teaches you the music industry and what you need to do. Hold on, this thing's wow. So if you're interested in something like this, you can email me at DerekChambers9 at gmail.com or you can call me directly at 1-646-470-1549 to get started today.
Now what I'm gonna break down are the terms of a recording contract and a publishing deal. So this is what to expect once you get signed to a recording contract or a publishing deal. Ownership of masters, this is everything. The artist can sell or transfer masters to the company or they can license them for a period of time. The number of recordings, the company will agree to one with options for others that are exercisable by the company. Options, increasing royalty rates and advances. When the company exercises the option, the band or artist will have a budget. So, you know, once you sign the contract, you will have a budget, okay? And a time frame to produce a recording. So this is why it's important for you know to sign a contract or get a deal because then it guarantees that you're gonna start making money in the music industry. Release commitment. Companies do not guarantee a release of a recording. If the recording isn't good enough, the company may decline to release it. So that's why a lot of artists be on the shelf. See? Because you might have an artist like Jay-Z or J. Cole or Rihanna, you know, they're gonna, not gonna release a new artist at the same time to compete with those artists, you know, you know what I'm saying? So there's a lot of things that, you know, that could be done. So it said, the release commitment companies do not guarantee a release of the recording. If the, the recording isn't good enough, the company may decline to release it. So a lot of artists sign to a deal, but they're on the shelf. Or sometimes, you know, the, the artist never even releases the, the material. So, now what constitutes delivery? The standard can be low and more objective. Technically satisfactory or high or more subjective, commercially satisfactory. Creative control. Artists generally want creative control, and companies often want it to be mutual or shared. So a lot of times, you know, artists will be signed to a deal, and then they get, you know, they might sign, uh, have like an independent deal, so they have more creative control as far as putting the material they want to put out versus just putting out what the, um, the label wants you to put out. But once you have talent, you know, that shouldn't be a problem. So creative control says generally artists want creative control and companies often want it to be mutual or shit for us to creative control. Term, how long does the contract last? Often stated in album cycles. The duration is triggered by delivery date, sales of last album and other dates. So once you're on a, a deal, you gotta be making the label money. Or you can get dropped from the label, see? So artists who talk about, you know, the, the, the single was never released, the album was re wasn't released because the, the single or the album might not sold, so you could get dropped from the label. Similar to as the way um, that you see a general manager gets fired because their team didn't make it to the, um, the Super Bowl or the championship because they didn't deliver, they didn't get in the playoffs. That's the same way it is when you're on a um, side to a, a contract, you gotta be selling. Like all these artists like Rihanna, J. Cole, JC, um, Adele, these are multi platinum selling artists. They're selling records. So they're guaranteed to stay on that label because they're making money. The streams, billions of streams. So you can't just be signed on a, on a label and you're not making no money at all. Understand? See what it says? Term. Let's go back. It says term. So how long does the contract last? Often stated in the album cycles, the duration is triggered by delivery date, sales of last album, and other dates. Territory, which is the US, the world, country, or geographic region in which the company may market and sell the music. How is the artist a band paid? Companies pay royalty advances to artists 
that are recouped from royalty earnings when the, the re recording is released and sold. Okay? That's how you get paid. So, you know, you want to make money, you got to have hits on your hand. So, you said the companies pay royalty advances to artists that are recouped from royalty earnings when the recording is released and sold. Just how you make money once you get signed to a uh, recording contract and publish it there. Recruitment. So, recording companies, excuse me, recording expenses, advances, and a portion of video and marketing costs are deducted from the royalties earned by the artist. Recoup, see? Sell slash variable royalties. Royalties may vary depending on source of payment, the type of use, and the age of the recording, among other things. Packaging deduction. Recording companies often view the expense of packaging the product as belonging to the artist and may reduce the gross price of the product on which royalties are computed by a certain percentage. Free goods. Recording companies often deduct a percentage of the number of units on which royalties are computed to allow them to provide sales incentives. Audit clause. Royalty statements are sent to the artist every six months. So, the royalties from um, the radio airplay, you get paid from that every six months. On the track. So it says, the audit clause, royalty statements are sent to the artist every six months and the artist has the right to audit the materials on which they are based for a period of time, usually a year or two. Others, recording contracts can be very long and detailed documents while publishing contracts and generally less complicated. So these artists, you know, they're making money. Because, you know, people are streaming and, you know, that's equivalent to album sales. A lot of people are not just buying CDs anymore. They're not buying records a lot. I mean, it's a combination of stuff that certain people still do buy CDs, they still do buy records, but these artists are um, doing Billions of dollars in streams, and that's the equivalent of going gold, which are 500,000, platinum is a million copies, and 2 million is 2 million copies, and so on and so forth. Double platinum, triple platinum, they're just doing that by streaming alone. And also, album sales and CD sales. Also. Now, how do songs make money? How songs and recordings make money? Through CDs, LPs, and downloads. Mechanical license, compulsory license. Video games, gaming, synchronization, synchronization license, negotiated fee, public performance. So, you know, your music has to be copyrighted, of course, so you can show proof of ownership. Public performance, radio streaming, internet radio, etc like Pandora, um, performer rights organizations collect for public performance of music, production music. Artists, bands, and producers will post their music to these companies and share the money earned. Radio ads, so when your music is played, commercial, a radio ad, that's called a transcription license. Samples. So the master use license for sound recorded mechanical license for use of song, negotiated fees. TV, video, toys, ringtone, user pays owners for the sound of recording, foreign royalties. So do other companies use of the musical recordings? That's how songs and recordings make money. Make sure your song is registered with MediaBase or BDS before implementing a radio campaign. And make sure it's available for sale online. Also, make sure you are registered with one of the performance rights organizations like ASCAP, BMI, CSAT to collect royalties from airplay and performances.
So if your music is not copyrighted, you're not gonna be made, able to make money in the music industry. A copyright, so you gotta make sure your music is copyrighted. A copyright is born at the moment of fixation. So once you write it down or record it, it's a copyright. However, you must get proof that you own the copyright. So registering your copyright with the US Copyright Office gives you an extra layer of protection. It's also known as a timestamp. Publishing is the bloodline of the music industry. The power of music publishing. Led Zeppelin song, Still With The Heaven, generates over a million dollars per year in publishing royalties. Let's settle in Stairway to Heaven is undeniably one of Rock's classic songs. Zeppelin hasn't licensed Stairway to Heaven for movies or commercials, but songwriters Jimmy Page and Robin Plant and Warner Chapel, the song's publisher, pour royalties for record sales, radio plays, and live performances. Zeppelin has played Stairway at every performance since 1971. Yielded somewhere in the neighborhood of, of 150,000 in royalty. Everyone from Frank Zappa to the London Philharmonic has also performed it. And when you take into account that it, the plays it received at hundreds of thousands of proms, weddings, and bar mitzvahs, well, that's some serious money. DJs and venues pay a small annual fee for the right to play it. Estimated gain, 400,000. Royalties from album and DVD sales total about 8.6 million. Plus, Stairway is a radio king clocking somewhere like 2,985,000 plays, nearly net and nearly 2 million. It's also thought to be the best selling piece of sheet music in rock history with royalties of a million. See, so the publishing process, the songwriter writes a song, copyright um, ownership is automatic. Makes the song publicly available, becomes the music publisher automatically. The song is divided into equal portions of share. So the songwriter's share, once you write that song, is 50%, and the publisher's share is 50%. The power of music publishing. Dad Dillinger receives approximately 200,000 in publishing royalties per quarter. Dad Dillinger receives approximately 200K in publishing royalties every quarter. The video shows what publishing royalties add up to every 90 days. This is just BMG publishing, not including Universal Publishing or Warner Publishing or Sony Publishing. Dad Dillinger has deals with all four of them for the same song. So he is generating publishing royalty revenues, both international and do domestic. Additionally, he's receiving performance royalties from ASCAP, sound exchange, plus album sales, digital sales, and shows. Okay, and this is um, Music Industry 101 and what I just showed you and what you need to do to get a record there. See you next time.